Hey guys, welcome back to another video review. Today we have Geralt of Rivia in his wolf armor from the Witcher 3 series by McFarlane Toys. On the back of the package you have a picture of Geralt himself, and on the side we have his name and the McFarlane logo. You can easily remove the figure from the box without having to rip anything apart. Although to take out the stand, you will have to cut into the package. This version of Geralt is from the video game Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. The Witchers are monster slayers for hire. They are taken as young children and have undergone experimental treatments using mutagens to make them resistant to pain and disease. They go under extreme physical and magical training making them the perfect monster slayer. Geralt is wearing the School of the Wolf Armor, one of the most recognized schools of the Witchers known for their expertise in slaying monsters. The School of the Wolf is where Geralt was trained as a boy and made into a Witcher, later to become one of the most legendary Witchers. Let's check out the details. We can notice Geralt's cat-like eyes and his large scar on his face. The face is sculpted with small blemishes like wrinkles in his forehead and other scars that mark his face. We have a light grey beard and his hair is combed back. On the side we can see more detail in his flowing hair, it's tied at the back and the hair is sculpted to rest on his shoulders. On the chest we have the wolf style armor that's mostly leather. We have two leather belts crossing his chest holding up a few pouches. Underneath we have a bit of chainmail over the leather armor. We can see some detail like fine stitching in the leather and a few buckles to strap himself in at the center. On the back we can see where the leather straps meet. With the large socket in the center, we will be covering up this area with the sword sheath later on. The shoulder has more chainmail armor with the light silver highlight to bring out the details, along with the elbows wrapped in leather straps. The fist is armored in a leather gauntlet with a rough texture. Small details like the metal studs in his knuckles can also be seen here. On the waist we can see a large belt detailed with notches and a large silver buckle. More leather armor covers the legs here in a diamond stitched pattern. We have a small knife strapped onto the thigh here along with metal knee guards. Large leather boots with cuffs at the top we can see more of that rough leather texture in the sculpting. One large strap is sculpted into the foot secures the boot into place. Let's check out the articulation. We have a ball jointed head. The sculpted hair gets in the way of some articulation. We have a ball joint in the shoulder socket. And they open and rotate all around. Rotation at the bicep. Double jointed elbows that bend back. Wrists that rotate and bend up and down. We have a ball joint at the chest, but the armor does block a lot of the movement. Legs that open and bend forward and back, with a slight bit of rotation. Double jointed knees that bend back. Ankles that bend up and down and rotate. And toes that bend upward. The sword sheath on the back come off easily. We can notice that they are hollow and aren't fully sculpted. This actually helps the sword not to get stuck while still being tight. They easily attach to the back socket using the large peg. We get a standard steel longsword used to fight other humans. And we get a silver sword for fighting monsters. We get a spell casting Igni fire blast effect attached to a hand. To install the Igni Fire Blast, you first take off the left hand of the figure. After that, you can easily socket the new Fire Blast hand into the peg. It's lightweight, so it doesn't drag the figure's arm down. We get a Bloody Griffin Head Trophy. A rope attaches easily to either hand. The blood effects are painted all over the head along with the bloody tongue hanging out. Here we can see more detail in the sculpting and paint. The effects are well done and look really gruesome. And we get a McFarlane stand with the Witcher 3 logo on it. McFarlane did a great job with Geralt's appearance from the game. While this is the second Geralt release, the wolf armor version is unique enough compared to series 1. The figure itself is extremely well detailed in the sculpt, with ton of small patterns sculpted into every piece of the leather. The wolf armor is one of the more iconic looks for Geralt and McFarlane did a great version of it. The only small complaints I have is that the armor gets in the way of some of the articulation, especially at the chest, but a cleaner look was prioritized over chest articulation. For the weapons, we get a steel and silver longsword along with the hand Igni fire blast effect. 
We get a lot of value from the figure, with enough accessories to give you a lot of options on how to display the figure. Plus that bloody griffin head is really an amazing accessory. Overall it's a great figure, the joints feel sturdy, the range of motion is great, and it's true to the accuracy of the in-game version of Geralt. Geralt in the wolf armor is a great fantasy figure to add to your collection, and if you missed it on the first wave, this makes a great reason to get this version. He's out in stores now, so check him out if you're looking for a great Geralt figure or want to complete the McFarlane 3 Witcher line. He's definitely a great fit in anyone's fantasy collection. Alright guys, that's it for this review. More reviews are coming up soon, so check out my other videos while you wait.